Uh, so we had a guy in the club, John Hoover, uh, and he was a prolific mead maker and uh, always had at least a bottle or two of mead on him. Jesse once said that he, he thought if he ran into him at the grocery store, John would be like, hey, try this mead. <laughs> but, uh, or, or he wouldn't have the mead. He'd be like, hey, how you doing? I don't know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'd have to pick up a bottle or something. Oh, John. John yeah. So John's great guy, great mead maker. Uh, and he inspired me to take a run at mead. Uh, my son was interested in doing it as well. So uh, we, we each made a mead. Um, I'll go over the recipe real quick and then talk about the, the actual, you know, I don't know, how it turned out and everything after. But um, it's basically a one-gallon batch, had three pounds of honey, and it's just wildflower honey. Um, I got it from Costco. It was the little bear jars. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So three of those. Uh, a gallon of distilled water. I used Red Star Champagne yeast. I did a teaspoon of yeast nutrient when I first mixed it. I did a teaspoon of yeast nutrient four days after I pitched it. Or, um, yeah, four days after I pitched the yeast. But before pitching the yeast, I added pectin enzyme mm. for 24 hours because I also added two cups of mashed blackberries. Ah. Yeah. So let's let me pour it. So there's no carbonation, no, so it doesn't go pop. <laughs> it's, it's, it's still, as they say. So I still consider the mead pretty young. Uh, we we actually made it in April, and I think I gave it three months to kind of clear out some. And we're gonna try to bottle it. And as soon as I moved it, all of the berry bits and goodness came up. And yeah. I was like, let's just rack it, get yeah. as much off out of it as we can and then i'll let it sit some more and then i let it sit for like what like five months so um yeah. I, for me the aroma is pretty boozy like a yep. higher alcohol for sure yep and, and flavor is too yeah you yeah. know but i mean for a, a young me so what's the abv it's sweet so it's 14 percent ABV. Oh, okay yeah. yeah no that's it was uh 1.113 original gravity okay. and then 1.010 final gravity 1.01 oh that's still kind of high but it was the blackberries yeah yeah, yeah. <coughs> huh. so well 14 percent. i don't know how high the champagne yeast would go um i was kind of surprised that it, it finished that high i was expecting yeah. it to finish at like zero yeah or that's negative yeah. yeah 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 no for sure because i thought i could be wrong because i'm not a mead guy at least not yet um I thought champagne champagne yeast just ate if there's sugar it would eat it doesn't matter how much alcohol is around it just yeah. goes so but I don't know that's why I was here too although yeah. evidently it won't eat it won't eat maltose or maltodextrin malto malto sucrose malto sucrose whatever the other maltose oh. sugar is yeah I don't know but uh, yeah so I, I like it it's got a lot of honey flavor to yeah, it it does it um, does. I don't know that it really has a blackberry. Yeah, thing. I would. Um, it has, I think the a hint of something berry like. Well, yeah, it has like the sweetness from the berries, but not necessarily the flavor. I don't know. That sounds kind of yeah. weird, but it's not a honey sweetness that I'm tasting. You know, I'm tasting that as well. But yeah. So, and when I say it's hot, it it really is. There, I've had way worse beers. Yeah. You know, they were way hotter in alcohol than oh, this. Yeah. Um, this is just a touch on the aroma. And if you're drinking <clears> it, it's like, I, I don't know, after the half of this, I probably won't notice the higher alcohol in the flavor and, anymore. Well, by the time I got down yeah. to that, it's not bothering I mean, I know it's still there, but it's not bothering me. The I first can smell sip it. was like, yeah. The I'm first sip smelling. I had was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'll be really curious to see how it tastes in like six months. Um, yeah. Yeah. Leave that sitting around for a while. Yeah. For sure. How many bottles do you have? Uh, so, okay, so it's a one-gallon batch, but I doubled it for myself. I did one gallon with uh, my son, and then I did two gallons for myself. Oh. Same recipe. Okay. And, uh, um, I, so I ended up with close to ten. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's that's definitely a, yeah. a keeper then. Yeah. And uh, I wish I'd, I'd remembered the bag, but I think the probably the saving grace is I went up to fermentations and I got two of these bags they have they're like hot bags or something and they're really long but not terribly wide mm -hmm. 
and I put the siphoning tube through it, mm-hmm. and then put a hair band around the top. Yeah. And uh, I couldn't find a rubber band, but hair band around the top and siphoned it out. And, oh, man, it left everything, almost everything behind. I mean, there's like nothing yeah. in here. Yeah, I mean, it's still hazy. I'm sure it'll clear out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I was really shocked at how much stuff got <laughs> filtered through that. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's a good idea. I think I have one of those bags you're talking about, but I use it for hops. So. Yeah. Well, in the past, like when I've done my lambics and stuff, um, there'll be cherries down in there, and uh, or um, yeah, cherries or peaches or whatever. But there's a lot, a lot of troop in oh, there. Oh yeah. And and I'd put the the siphoning tube through a bag, but it had a drawstring on it, and it wasn't nearly as long as this one is, and because uh, this one went all the way to the top of the siphon tube. Right? Oh yeah. No. It's and. Uh, and you've kind of got to hold the string to keep it out of the when you're in the carboy to keep it from falling down and whatnot. So these bags work way better, huh. way better. Wow, I have to look for those because yeah. I, I almost bought some on Morbid or something just so that uh, I use them for hops. But yeah. if they have them, I'd rather buy them from from fermentations. Than well, and then Morbier. the true test is I uh, I did ten gallons of a peach kettle sour using um, Philly sour yeast, and we'll probably have a video or something coming up soon but um there were i used 20 pounds of peaches or 25 pounds of peaches from a guy's tree Hmm. and then i didn't think they were peachy enough so i put in like a can of peach puree and you should have seen how much troop was in there too oh there was so many peaches in there it wasn't (laughs) even funny and i used that thing on the siphoning cane no problem all came out i didn't get any beer was perfectly clear yeah nothing in i was like this is a winner wow and so you put that on the part that goes into the the beer yeah yeah yeah. yeah. on the outside of the auto siphon yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. okay that's making sure i had the had the right way oh that's cool yeah so great idea but, yeah, it's, well, I went back for seconds, so. But, yeah, still getting it on the nose, yeah. but, yeah, the flavor is all honey now. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to bet, and, I mean, I don't know how long, but I would try it again in six months just to see if it's gone. But I'm, I'm, once that alcohol <coughs> comes down, I think it's going to be just amazing. Yeah. So, coincidentally, I think I made a mead, nothing fancy, blackberries or anything, just straight up mead, um, just shortly after... You did yours. Mm-hmm. So I remember talking to my son about it, and he's like, hey, Mike made one. And so anyway, um, and mine was just, it turned out better than the first meat I made, which was just horrific. This one was just turpentine. Hmm. And then you know, I told my wife, I'm like, yeah, it didn't turn out. It's, I'm just going to dump it. She's like, just bottle it and put it in the, you know, just let it sit for a while. It'll probably mellow. And my wife's pretty smart. And so, so, uh, so that's what I did. And man, it is crystal clear then you read the newspaper through it is crazy how's clear. it taste um i haven't tasted it in a while i've only got like two or three bottles oh yeah so i'm yeah. being kind of you're stingy waiting with holding off yeah so yeah. probably i think i you did in april i probably did mine in may maybe in may oh yeah you know, after a year see what they taste yeah like. yeah i mean there's no rush on no and i'll do another one hopefully a better one I'll learn yeah from my mistakes but yeah i'm know. anxious i'd like to try some more meats i i, yeah. I found a site online that will send you a bucket of mead yeah and and it was pretty inexpensive and they had a wide varietal selection so yeah um i mean like vermont wildflower and yeah i mean just I, oh I, did they have peach blossom i don't think they had pe- peach blossom or oh, i was thinking about going out west and seeing if we could get some peach blossom out yeah. in the golden area or oh. palisade area yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh um orange blossom i think was on there but i couldn't i think they were sold out at the time um, but yeah, I I thought that cool. I really do like the mead. I've been like I think I mentioned I've been dabbling more in wines and liquors and meats and so yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, this is well, it's a nice break for beer. It makes you appreciate beer more yeah. if you have something else. So yeah, I think. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. But it's something different. It's just more, more flavors, more alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More ways to more ways to delight my senses. <laughs> so. Um. That's it. Yeah. No. Good job. I like yeah. this. Hopefully, uh, we'll press on with this. Let me know. Well, when, when are you doing the next batch? Uh, I don't know. I should die yeah. already. Right? Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah. So, huh, so. Okay. Hopefully soon. I've got a backlog of stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. Like that yeah. cider kit. 
we filmed the like the oh. opening for this cider <laughs> kit, and it's still sitting in my office. I, I was looking at it today, it. and it's like. You, you need a 7.8 gallon fermenter or something. I'm like, who the hell's got the? I mean, I got I got a couple, but they're tied up. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? You're doing other stuff. Yeah. And uh, so every time I think about it, I'm, I have the big fermenters tied up. Yeah. And uh, then it's cold now in my basement, so I don't want to leave it unattended down there. It'll, uh-huh. I don't know how well it would do. And then I've got the mango juice and the cider for the Philly sour mango cider. Mm. that uh one of our viewers suggested and i haven't done that and i've got a bunch of other apple juice for something and, yeah and a bucket of honey <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. yeah i need to get on it yeah use up those fermentables exactly yeah but okay. all right well cool. till next time yep. cheers cheers thanks for watching our video Check out our website at coloradobrewtalk.com for more great content. While you're there, be sure to leave us a comment or drop us a line with your thoughts. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at CO Brew Talk, or follow the links below. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any future content. Or episodes, as the case may be. <laughs> <laughs>